As Ken, I'm going to start with you. I know that you are a bull, but just this morning we got news that uh, private payrolls rose by just 27,000. We have some of the largest institutional investors shifting money out of equities. We saw Which has been going on this entire bull market. Okay. So we also saw investors pull out in a big way, individual investors last month, the most so far this month, $44 billion in outflows. Which you got to love. So tell me why you got to love it. Because it's a sign of pessimism. Okay. Pessimism mean reverts. The fact is, think about it, if you take that payroll number, you could focus on the negatives if you want, but if you actually look overnight at all of the European PMIs, with the exception of one, they all surprised on the positive side, and nobody writes about that. But that is, is that a reason to stay posi- in U.S. equities? Oh, U.S. equities uh, have this bigger reason to stay in them. Big, 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 big. <laughs> now think about this, because nobody gets this. Okay. You got a near 3% hole you can drive a truck through right now that nobody talks about. Because I can borrow money at zero interest rate in Europe Mm -hmm. and use it by lending from my European operation to my American operation with a currency hedge and use it in America. So then. Pick up the spread. I can lend it out if I want at zero risk. Pick up the near 3% spread by the time I get finished with the currency hedge and it's near free money. And that's going on for both Japan and the continent, not so much Britain, at a very heavy rate and no one talks about it. Money is flowing into America from overseas, financed by overseas, at a huge rate and nobody gets that because of the spread of our short-term rates versus their short-term rates. It's a real simple arbitrage operation. And that function is big and nobody gets it. It is a reason why the U.S. should do well relative to other things right now because they're financing us. You know, Ken, uh, we just had Fed Governor Lyle Brainard tell our, our Brian Chung they are prepared to adjust policy. Now, as we know, bull markets don't die of old age. The Fed kills them. So is the Fed slowly killing this bull market with this language? I don't think that the Fed's as relevant as people think it is. Just think about what I said a moment ago. When they keep those short rates up high, that just flows the money in from overseas. It's the global yield curve that matters, not the American yield curve. Anyhow, it's a global world. Here we have the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. We saw those futures higher for a second day. It looks like the Dow Industrials are going to start the day up. Uh, triple digits up 137 points. Scott, what are you looking at this morning? Well, I'm obviously going to be continuing to watch how the market continues to react to, you know, what we heard from Jerome Powell yesterday. I was a little skeptical of the market's obscene reaction to what Powell said that we would, you know, sustain the expansion. The Dow up 500 points. Yeah, and, and when you see these big moves to the upside and even big moves to the downside, that's not necessarily a sign of a healthy market. But I have a question for Ken in that. What is your reaction to the falling 10-year Treasury yields? Is that a referendum on what investors are feeling about with the U.S. economy? Or is that more so what you were talking about earlier, falling European government bond rates, pushing our yields down as well? Long rates move together parallel around the world. Some a little more, some a little less, but the correlations there are very high. And you use the word, Scott, which I think is the right word, feeling. I concur completely that the feeling is bad. I like it when people feel bad because feelings are You're sentiment. You're scaring us now, Ken. Feelings are sentiment, which mean revert. The reality is that the game is reality versus perceptions. And when the perceptions are worse than the future reality, markets rise. When the future realities are worse than the perceptions, markets fall. Numbers are coming in over and over again better than people expect on a global basis when they expect terrible, and then they reset to expect terrible. Well, I IMF, like that. The IMF today just lowered expectations for yeah. China. So, and you're happy about this. Yeah, because the more they do that, I mean, mind you, is China doing great? No. But China's put in place a lot of monetary stimulus, and monetary stimulus in China typically takes about six months to take effect. Mm -hmm. The fact is the IMF can drop those numbers. They've done that twice before this year. And they did that before we actually ever got to the first phase in the first quarter of the big up move after the down move in the fourth quarter of last year. The fact is, has the IMF been ever good at predicting anything? (laughs) No, (laughs) definitely not. Ken, uh, talking about predicting, I've always viewed you as a long-term investor, always focused on the the long term. 
Should investors worry about uh, President Trump winning the election? Uh, because he clearly is taking a harder line uh, on trade policy, which could damage corporate confidence, and arguably is starting to. That's a great question. So let me go off in a different direction on that. If you look at the history of third years of president's terms from the beginning of the S&P 500 in the 1920s, they're positive 91% of the time. The fact is that is typically kind of front end loaded in the year. We've had a lot of front end load this year already. It typically slows down as we move toward the back of the year and you get more excitement about the upcoming presidential election, which I think we can have a lot of excitement about. The fact is then we got all these crazy people running for president always. And then eventually we get down to where we have two nominees and then we get a winner. And we always somehow get a winner in November of the election year. And I predict that we will get a winner in November. And what typically happens if you look at the average course of the fourth year of a president's term, it starts off kind of slow and accelerates in the back half as you move past the primaries, get two clear choices, and then the market pre-prices, because that's what markets do for a living, pre-prices the winner. Will Trump get reelected? I don't have a clue. I think we're way too early to know such things. The fact of the matter is I predict the Democrats will have a nominee. I predict. <laughs> that's good. I, I'll, I predict, go, I'll go well bet on that. I predict the Republicans will have a nominee. How do you invest into that? Because you just look at the history of the back half of fourth years of president's terms, mm -hmm. and on average, they're pretty darn strong. We've only had four negative fourth years of president's terms in the history of the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. We've so, only had two in the third year for president's term, the last one was 1939 as World War II was starting. This is actually in American history a good thing, but let me give you a different thing that Americans don't much think about. Forget about that election, because that election's a long ways off. What just happened is more important, which is the EU parliamentary election. We've had five, eight of these before, and in all but the very first one, in the next 12 months, the market was positive because you get that same effect, which is the aftermath of going from high uncertainty to right, falling uncertainty. Right, and we know the markets don't like that. But you know what I find ironic is that with all of these tariffs, even if they were to slow growth here, ironically, it's going to force the Fed to do exactly what Trump wants them to do, which is to cut interest rates. And wouldn't the market have a positive reaction to that? Well, lately, yes, the market has been attached to the Fed. Um, but. You know, I think that's not necessarily a constructive pattern, and ultimately, what drives you know corporate earnings and, and stocks are kind of how the, the the underlying companies. The fundamentals, are doing. yeah, right. the fundamentals. I will add one more thing into this discussion. Union Pacific. Uh, I think investors really need to know. They came out. They have a presentation at UBS this morning. They said their volumes are down three percent. This company is heavily exposed to Mexico. So if you're trading this market, you're feeling pretty good uh, about what the Fed said yesterday. Here's corporate America speaking to you. Here's an impact of the trade war. There we go. So how do you how do you trade right now? Do you stay fully invested in equities, even though we have all these tariff fights seemingly around the world? You know we've had tariff discussions since uh, the beginning of 2018. And the fact of the matter is, if you scale up the total cost of those tariffs, and you presume that they would all be real and implemented, which they won't, and if no one could get around them by substitution, of which some will, by definition, you still have an impact that's less than 1% of GDP. That is, in an otherwise 3% GDP growth world, something that diminishes growth in the course of a year by a third, at most. The fact is, I go back to my prior point, PMIs around the world are surprising the upside. In the biggest blocks in the world, even economic indexes are positive and rising. In America, we just had that. The world doesn't focus on the positives right now. The world focuses on the negatives right now. I like it when the world focuses on the negatives. So the answer is yes. It's a bull market. It will reemerge as a bull market exactly when? I don't know. Today? Who knows? Eventually? Before too long? Yes. The fact is, People are too focused on the negatives. Let me just go off on a crazy topic if I can for a second. Yeah, you have 10 seconds. <laughs> Watch what Trump does with the Mexican tariffs because I'm going to guarantee you that it isn't what people think it'll be. We'll come back and talk about that some other day.